Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, it just goes to show you that even when the world shuts down, you can never stop the music. And if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to assume that you do, because... Quite frankly, you're listening right now. You can hear me. Uh, and we, I love you for it. But if you, if you keep loving me for it and subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Give us the old five-star rating on your podcast provider of choice. We're available pretty much everywhere. Places like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. And plus we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we'd really appreciate it. You can go and catch up on anything you like. Also, uh, don't... Uh, you know, Actually, no, I'm not saying don't. I'm saying do. Please follow us on social media. Don't forget to do that. Uh, We're at In The Seats on all your favorite places. We're at uh, the Facebook. We're at the Twitter. We're at the Instagram. Uh, We're at the Letterboxd. We're at the TikTok. And we're even at the Tumblr for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats. In The Seats.ca for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because guess what? If we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So do us that kindness and pay us a visit. On this episode, we got a fun one. It is a film that had its debut over at the uh, Hot Docs uh, Canadian International Documentary Film Festival this past uh, spring. And it's called... uh, well, it's a rock doc. It's called July July Talk. Love lives here. And of course, if you're a fan, you know who July Talk is. Uh, and what this is, it's basically, it's a story from the pandemic. It's just, they had a tour ready to go, and then everything ground to a halt. And they sort of had to take a pause and take stock. But then uh, the band members, uh, Leah Faye and uh, Peter Germanis, uh, they put together a one-of-a-kind plan to uh, have a drive-in show in August 2020, which was pretty epic. And this film is following and documenting all that. And it is from Red Directy, director Brittany Farhat, who we had the unique pleasure of sitting down and talking with during the festival this past uh, May. And uh, we asked about how she got connected with the band and just sort of making the movie and, you know, diving into what makes July talk tick in so many ways and really sort of documenting the show and just really giving us sort of the inside inside experience of this one of a kind event that happened uh during the pandemic it's 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 a it's a testament to the spirit of the creative forces you know to do something different especially you know when they have to when revenue dream streams drive up dry up uh believe me we can relate on that one it's something that uh, everyone in the creative world is always working on and always looking at and it's again it's a it's a fascinating and it's really a well done documentary that's not going to start it's going to be for fans of july talk it'll be for everyone but i am going to tell you that after watching this i am a fan of july talk and i, I absolutely love them but uh uh july talk loves lives here is available on video on demand platforms as we speak uh but first enjoy our talk with uh britney farhat because uh, between you and me it's a darn good one I mean, thank you so much for the time today. And I mean, and congrats on the movie. I thought it was absolutely great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It means a lot to me. (laughs) Thanks for having me. I'm excited to speak with you today. No, I mean, I guess my first question is like, walk me through the origin of wanting to document all this. I mean, it definitely felt from the film, you had a bit of a second hand with the band already, but this was definitely sort of taking it to a different level. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, so the band uh, July Talk announced two drive-in shows early on in the COVID-19 pandemic when the live music industry was completely shut down. Um, at the time, I I saw this like show poster posted on the internet and it was circulating. I was like, what? A show poster in 2020? Like, this is too good to be true because I was just seeing tours being canceled, yeah. you know, shows being shut down, all of that. And it was really like, such a surprise and I was just so like grateful to to see such a innovative and like this like new idea that was happening in such a dark time and I also had like so many questions about how it was going to work and 
was honestly like kind of skeptical about whether or not it was going to happen in the first place. So yeah, not too many details were announced except for that there was a show and it was going to happen at a drive-in theater and I needed to know more. So I immediately reached out to the, the band, first of all, like expressing my gratitude for having this idea about bringing people together and making live music happen. And, and, and also just asking like, how can I help? Like, how can I be involved? Um, being a person who is super passionate about live music. Like I always say, like, I'm a music fan first and a filmmaker second. Like okay. I was just so like, I just wanted to like be there and, and I wanted it to happen. And I just asked like, what can I do? Like, I knew it was going to be live streamed. Um, so I asked questions about that, but then also like found out that there was, there was a team that was already involved. And, and I, and I really realized that there was this whole like crew of people that were coming together in order to make this show happen. And I felt as if my place in this experience in this project was to like document the collaboration behind the, the band and their crew and them really like, you know, pushing through this tough, tough time in order to make these shows possible. So for months, I started documenting the process behind uh, planning these shows, the challenges that the band faced leading up to the event, um, was at the drive-in itself, documenting the behind the scenes and how the crew was interacting, how the band, what their feelings were, like to be stepping on stage for the first time in a long time. Um, and... Yeah, throughout that process, like I learned so much about the band because I was with them in their homes, actually not in their homes, mostly outside because of the social distancing rules. So they were playing everything outside on like plastic tables, masked up. I was like social distancing. So it was really challenging in that sense to actually like feel like, um, um, like really like kind of like we were connecting, but it was very kind of in a distant way. But so mm -hmm. we had to kind of learn how to like interact. And I was learning a lot of like personal struggles that they were going through, like, like from like, um, yeah, a personal perspective too. like, and I was documenting those things and asking them questions and a lot of like issues like mental health and like physical health started to come up. And throughout that process, like, I just wanted to dive in deeper. So after the drive-in show, I continued to work with the band and and continued to follow up on these things that were unfolding before my eyes. Um, they spoke to me a lot about like burnout and what it feels like to be touring like constantly. Uh, they have like such a long, long life as a band so far. They've been, you know, making re records and touring the world for over 10 years. So I really dove into that what it what it feels like to be a man you know grinding and 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 what it feels like for that to be all kind of taken away from you too during the pandemic so yeah I've been working on this film for three years and and it's really a portrait of a community of artists that came together during this tough time um, to make live shows possible and to make music happen in a time that felt really challenging to gather and yeah. <laughs> well, and I mean, that's the fascinating thing for me, because I mean, in watching it, I mean, as a band, they had had this reputation and this history of being just, you know, throw everything in the back of the van and go and tour and perform and like almost in a very much a punk rock kind of aesthetic. And to see them planning out something so meticulous and so carefully and having to uh, to rehearse, which you know, was even sort of counter their you know some of their very natures just for like sort of the in-between stuff like you know riffing with the audience was was kind of fascinating I mean I, I was curious like like when you're in the middle of it like watching them are are you kind of aware that they're even sort of having to reinvent their own live show so sort of on the fly as as they build towards this these shows yeah I like I never really um like so July Talk was a band that was very much like, like um, they, how do you say it? Like, uh, um, they were pretty like, I guess like kind of private. Um, I never was really exposed to this, this world, like this behind the scenes look until I started working with them on this documentary because they've been um, very like, I guess like intentional about what they share publicly and on the internet and like they're 
their their music videos were so like you know cinematic and and produced so beautifully and they really have like this like iconic like aesthetic when it comes to yeah their music their live shows and they were very they're very like mysterious too which also drew me like um to to become very curious about them and their story and why I wanted to know more because I didn't know a whole lot about them um from like the the back side like the, their backstory so um when I started to document them leading up to the drive-in show. Like I really started to realize like how like DIY they were and like how, how much control they have like over their vision and like, like the people that they work with and like what, why they do the things that they do. Like they're, they're visionaries in that sense. And, and I really ex respect them for that. Like, like they come from a filmmaking background, like, um, Leia uh, and Peter, they're amazing um, pr producers and, and filmmakers themselves. And the drive-in show, it was so interesting to watch them put it together because they really wanted to include that like kind of cinematic element to the concert through like what the live stream was going to look like, like what was going to be projected on the screen. So it was very like carefully orchestrated, but then from the from looking at it behind the scenes like it was very like bare bones they just really took on a lot of work themselves and and um had like a very small team and that's what I admire about them because I, I very much see myself in them like I have these big ideas and I have these big dreams and I love to surround myself with a community and to keep my friends close and to to work on things together but you know it was very like a kind of a tight ship like <laughs> so yeah and like when it comes to like seeing their journey like when I dove into the band history like it was very like kind of scrappy and punk rock and and um yeah so I really watched the band grow over the years but they do still hold those same kind of values like I know like to this day like they still like to do things themselves and they and they do make a lot of like sacrifices for their art and approach it in a very like DIY and punk rock way. So, yeah, I think they balance those two things like really beautifully. No, I mean, I'm curious, how did you manage to sort of engender their trust and, and balance your vision with with their vision? Because, I mean, again, they are such meticulous artists. I can imagine there was a temptation, at least on their end, to try to steer you to a certain degree how did you manage to sort of get their trust and sort of be allowed to operate independent of them yeah that's yeah that's a great question um I was really excited about um entering their world which was like this like kind of cinematic world but approaching it from like a very like kind of DIY way like on my end like I I love to like run around with my camera like I love like I'm always like in the pit like shooting like rock shows and like I thrive off of that so like I was really excited to have like kind of like that like cinematic like um ecosystem like that July talk has created and to kind of enter it in a way that felt like um kind of like punk rock and like those two things like merging was really exciting to me so the live stream I knew was going to be directed by this amazing director um Adam Crosby who has worked on um July talk music videos over the years and he had he has built this reputation for like this really beautiful like cinematic um like the way that he shoots like live concerts is like world class and no and like no, no other and and the idea of mixing that with like my like very like uh stripped down like like bare bones like documentary style crew like coming out and and approaching it in a very like yeah like kind of raw and gritty like that really excited me and they were really stoked about that they saw that it was something different they also like we we have met previously like at shows like um they would see me like shooting like concerts and stuff. And I, and I think they like trusted me and my vision because of maybe like uh, the things that they have so seen me do like in the past, I would like to think. So yeah, it was just, it felt like new and fresh and yeah, they were on board. <laughs> Is that what led to the decision for black and white? Because I mean, it's such a simple choice, but it definitely made it feel a bit sort of like a lot grander. Yeah. Um, 
Well, July talks like aesthetic is very much like they they have like that iconic black and white look like right. the, the, all their music videos, like all their like uh photography and and that kind of thing. So and then for me, like my first music video that I ever made wasn't black and white. Like I had like a live like um a live series like back in the day when I would shoot bands like at shows and it was all in black and white. And that was a very much like an aesthetic that I was drawn towards. And July Talk does a lot of like they shoot on like 16 mil film Bolex. So a lot of their archives were um, natively like shot um, monochrome, like black and white. So, yeah, it just felt it just felt very appropriate for this documentary to be in black and white. <laughs> No, I mean, I guess that that dovetails into the next question. Like, I can imagine it's a bit of a trip to get sort of access into the archives to to look through older footage to to use for the document. Like, how how long was that process to really sort of comb through the stuff they had already done that you knew you could use for this project? Yeah, so it was about eighteen months of editing. Um, I edited it from home. Um. Over, there's a like, seven there's a seven hour cut of the film somewhere isn't there yeah totally like i really like i first started with just the the drive-in and like the the documentation leading up to the drive-in and like after the shows actually happened um i came home and i really like went through the footage and and thought about like okay what did we capture like what were the things that i felt were like the most like important and what story do i want to tell and and um, I I really realized that like there was a lot more to this story than just the drive-in show. It was it was about community. It was about their journey as a band, and it just I really needed to um, yeah dive into <laughs> more deeper storytelling. And I, and the band I know like had so many amazing collaborators over the years documenting their tours um shooting their music videos like so there was like a sacred vault of footage somewhere and I was able to be given those keys <laughs> <laughs> and on uh, one day I I drove to we drove to the band's house and and they draw they they passed me this cardboard box full of hard drives and they told like it was never seen before footage and I was the only one given the permission to to go through it and yeah it was about 18 months of editing and I really watched everything and it was really fascinating because there was a lot of these beautiful like observational moments where they're in the studio recording their first record and I really made a point to include that footage in this documentary to tell it in the most like kind of natural way um yeah. I wanted to stay away from you know like like talking heads like that kind of stuff like it was a, it was a, yeah it was meant to be like very like fly on the wall and yeah it was it was it's such an honor to have been able to work with those archives <laughs> No, I mean, I'm curious because, I mean, obviously with this film, I mean, at least from my opinion, you're entering kind of like a pantheon of rock and roll docs that have managed to transcend being more than just a concert film and really give us sort of insight into the artists themselves. And I mean, I'm kind of curious, is there a movie, uh, particularly a rock and roll documentary you saw back in the day that, that allowed for that kind of access that maybe had a light bulb go off in your head that allowed you to sort of marry the two because i mean like you said you're a music fan first but you're a filmmaker as well so i mean i can imagine sort of seeing the marriage of the two together was definitely a bit of a a bit of a moment for you yeah yeah that's a great question um definitely like my one of my favorite movies of all time um and it's it's like it's a mockumentary um it's hardcore logo by bruce mcdonald oh love it good answer yeah yeah i love that film um and yeah, it's just like it inspired me. Like I also grew up like just buying concert DVDs and going to shows and documenting them with my camera and like really trying to find my own voice too. Like I was very much heavily influenced by music videos as well. Um and tour documentaries like um Don't Look Back um was such a uh amazing film too yeah. that it really inspired me um and i just love like how um yeah like verite it is and and it's just really like observing the artist and like having growing up like touring with bands too 
I just find it fascinating to just like, you know, be in the room and just like listen and observe and, and just capture those moments. So um, yeah. And Bonavesta social club. Oh, that was great. Uh, yeah. I, I love that film as well. Um, I also love um, homecoming by Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> So it's it's kind of all over the place, totally. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Brittany, I mean, I definitely think this film is, you know, equal in many parts to so many of the things you just mentioned. Because, I mean, you put us in the room and you kind of stay out of the way, but you give us a very sort of artistic and personal glance at these people and just sort of the stresses of putting on this this very unique show, which... I mean, at the time when they did it was was such a was such a well needed thing, and I mean, I'm glad you were there to document it, and I mean, I'm glad people are going to get to see it now. But I mean, honestly, Brittany, thank you so much for the time today. Congrats on the work. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to to meet with you and to speak with you. And don't forget to to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs.